Good morning. My name is Mark Welsh. I'm the pastor here at Polk Street United Methodist Church. I'm so honored that you chose to worship with us. It's my prayer and all of our prayer that you would connect with God in a special way as together we worship the Lord in music, in word, and in deed. So I pray God's blessings on you this morning as together we lift up the name of our Lord. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm going to invite everyone, whether you're on, online or here in the sanctuary, to go to psumc.com and register your attendance. We appreciate being able to keep up with everybody that way. And if you would give us a good email address, we could communicate all that's going on here during the church week. Uh, take a look at your bulletin insert. There's lots of things happening we're going to kick off back in-house this Wednesday and also still continue online Bible studies. Also on October 3rd, that's a Saturday from 9 to noon, I need 15, volu- actually 14 because I'm number 15, 14 volunteers to come to the food bank and help sort and box food. So if you would be willing to do that, if you would give me a call or send me an email this week and let me know that you're going to be there on October 3rd. We appreciate that. I hope that you prepared your hearts for worship this morning, that you didn't come just going through a routine and that's because it's Sunday morning and that's what you do, but that you truly open your hearts up to let the Lord do a great and mighty work in you on this day to fill you with his love and his grace and his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, we do invite you today, not only in this place in all the places people are gathered online on this day, but into our hearts, Lord, to do a mighty work in us. Lord, we thank you, God, for your grace, your forgiveness, and your love. Help us, Lord, when we cross paths with someone this week, that you would let that love and grace and forgiveness spill over from our hearts into the hearts of others, that we would truly be about making disciples for you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I got up here without a bulletin, and I'm going to grab Mark's right quick. And I invite you to stand with me in our call to worship. The Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, May God's peace be in our hearts and lives. Amen. Now let us join together in our historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. How are y'all today? You doing good? Yeah, very good. All right. Well, so what comes to your mind whenever you think of the word peace? Pizza. What? Pizza? No, not a piece of pizza, and not a piece of cake, and not a piece of pie, not P I E C E, but P E A C E, peace. So what comes to your mind whenever you think of that? Some people think they have what an image that comes to mind is a dove. And Victoria Clare, can y'all point out a dove in the sanctuary? Do you happen to see one? Yes, right up here, right above Jesus' head is a dove. So that is a symbol of peace. And that um, peace um, can mean an absence of war or no war. And so whenever there's no war, that means that's a time of peace. But Jesus gives us a peace that's a little bit different from just no war, okay? So the peace that Jesus gives us in the Bible, it tells us in John 14, 27, that Jesus gives us a gift of peace. And it's not a peace like no war, but this is a peace that you feel inside of you. It's a feeling that you have inside when things around you is a calm kind of feeling, yes, serene type feeling, you feel good. It's a peace that you have that, that even whenever things around you may not be perfect, but you still have that inner feeling of just everything's okay. You have an inner peace. And, you know, the more time that we spend with God, the more peace that we have in our lives. And so even whenever you say, for instance, let's see here, uh, Victoria, maybe whenever you go to the dentist, you can feel peace <laughs> during that time. Yes, you can. And then, or if you have a test that's coming up at school, you can have a peace about you that you, that you trust in God, that you're going to do your very best on that test or even if you have like a big game coming up sometimes you can get nervous about that but you can pray to God spend time with him and know that he's going to help you do your very best and you know kind of think about maybe your your favorite blanket think about your favorite blanket that you have at your house or if you have a favorite stuffed animal you know that brings you comfort during that time and God gives you comfort. He is like the ultimate favorite blanket or the ultimate favorite stuffed animal to give you peace and comfort. So no matter what is going around you, you can have that peace. And the more time that we spend with him, uh, the more peace that we have. And so more God, more peace. All right, more God, more peace. So no matter what's going on around you, you can have that peace with you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the peace that can only come from you. Sometimes our circumstances around us cause us to not feel that peace immediately, but we pray that whenever those circumstances come up, that we will turn to you and, and hold on to the peace that can only come from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First Chronicles 16 says, look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. Let us pray. We enter your gates this morning with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We praise your holy name. We thank you for your faithfulness from generation to generation, for your never-ending love and grace for each of us. We appeal this morning to your goodness and mercy as we bring before you the prayers of our hearts. We pray for our missionaries serving throughout the world as they share the good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We pray for the military around the world. Give them protection and peace as they stand in harm's way. We pray for our law enforcement officers and first responders. 
We give you thanks for their commitment to uphold justice, law, and order. We pray for those facing illnesses and injuries of every kind. Bring your healing touch and new life to those who are afflicted. We pray for comfort to all who grieve the death of loved ones. May the body of Christ be a strong comfort to all who mourn. We pray for all who have suffered loss due to hurricanes, storms, and fires throughout our land. We pray for relief and provision for each of them in the days to come. We pray now for your spirit to fill each of us and Pastor Mark as he delivers your message for today. Change us and make us into new creations to serve you in the world. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus taught us with one voice to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I want to thank each of you for the way you give to this church, not just monetarily, but in other ways, reaching out with the love of Christ, especially over to San Jacinto Elementary School. Uh, we fed them right before school started. Uh, many of you wrote encouraging letters and cards and sent them to the staff. So we got a stack of thank you notes back, and I just wanted to share a couple of those with you this morning. This one comes from the principal of the school, Justin Ruiz. Words cannot express how much I appreciate you all for what you do for San Jacinto. We are blessed beyond measure by how amazing you are to us. Thank you again for all you do. This is from one of the special ed teachers, Anitra Watson. Thank you so much for always going above and beyond for our students, staff, and campus. Your kindness truly reflects the love of Jesus. Thank you. Would you turn in your bulletin and join me in our offertory prayer? God of our salvation, we offer our gifts to you in thankfulness for all your blessings, knowing others have so much less. Then we remember that we have been blessed to be a blessing. May the lives we live this day and every day be an offering of blessing to you, O oh God, and to those who are in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Today's scripture reading comes from Numbers 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Matthew 5, 9 through 12. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are prosecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In this world, especially at this time in humanity and life of our country, there is anything, it seems like, of peace. With upcoming elections, with fires, floods, shootings, Riots, corruption, misinformation, miscommunication. It just seems to continue to build the anxiety and cause turmoil. But my friends, there is a blessing even in the midst of turmoil. So I do feel like the Lord has laid a message on my heart this morning. It's a heavy message. So I would like to begin with a word of prayer together. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this message. And I pray now that you would speak through me. So Lord, may the meditation of all our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. So I would like to propose to you that these days are not necessarily unprecedented. We've had struggles before. Ecclesiastes 1.9 says that there is nothing new under the sun. The struggle, the issues, the turmoil, the fires, the floods, they're nothing new. In fact, Socrates is quoted in 400 B.C. saying, The children now live in luxury. They have bad manners, contempt for authority. They show disrespect for their elders. They no longer rise when elders enter the room. They contradict their parents. They chatter before company. They gobble up deities at the table, cross their legs, and are tyrants over their teachers. That's 400 B.C. Interesting to think about. They struggled raising their kids back then, just as we struggle with raising our kids today. And yet, even though this is, this is not unprecedented, COVID-19 is new, like 19. That's why it's COVID-19, 2019, right? So it's new to us. But quarantining isn't new. If we read in our history books, 100 years ago, they closed down Amarillo for weeks, if not months, if not even years. I love seeing members of our church remind us of that on Facebook and in different arenas, that they share about some of the historical ideologies from 100 years ago. What happened? Yet, again, there are wars, floods, riots, fires, not only in our history books, but in the Bible. Just look at the plagues. Look at the wars between God's people and others. All the different scenarios that happened, the struggles that they had, the human condition about the struggling within the elements, but also in the human heart, struggling with sin, 
So every generation thinks that they are original. And if sometimes we don't think about the history and understand some of the perspective of human life, we think that we're the only ones that are struggling with it, the only ones that are dealing with it. And I would like to propose to you again a counterthought that this is the first time we've experienced it. So just because people experienced it 400 B.C. and 1,000 years ago and 100 years ago doesn't mean that we know how to experience it. So an element of it contradicts itself because we are experiencing it. It's new to us. But it's the same story with new characters, with different people, with different dynamics, yet the same base. But it looks a little bit different. But I would like to propose to you once again, the whole thesis of the whole big idea is that we have the same situation going on. Sometimes we feel like we're under siege under siege, we're under attack. Jeremiah 16, uh, Jeremiah 6, 14, Jeremiah says, there's peace, peace, when there is no peace. Declaring that there's peace, but there wasn't any peace. Just like today, I feel like I'm saying, experience God's peace, and yet there is no peace. So, how do we find peace? Isaiah 26.3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you, O God. So I'd like for us to explore the blessing of peace. We're in the middle of our message series of the blessing. And we've looked at the different blessings and different elements. And we started off with blessing our teachers and our students. And we looked at number 6, 24, 26, the priestly blessing. As he would get up in front of all of God's people and, and give them this blessing that comes from numbers that Kyle read today. And yet, in 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10, it's declared that we are priests that no longer we have to go to a holy of holies to experience God, but God can be accessible to anyone, anytime. It's called the priesthood of all believers. That anyone at any time can come before our Lord. It was beautiful to see the Amarillo community uniting as one in Hodgetown with over 4,000 people and 70 different churches come together instead of racial riots, racial reconciliation, and worship. And so need to be a part of that here in Amarillo. So schools started and there was a spike in cases, but it was to be expected. In our church, we had a couple staff members and a couple of our choir um, test positive. And so we were very responsible. I'm very proud of our staff and proud of our choir. So we quarantined. We kind of put a pause on it, but we'll be, re we'll be restarting soon. And we are following proper protocol and making sure everyone's safe and healthy, and yet continue to worship the Lord here in Amarillo, but also keep everyone comfortable within the arena of this new world. Last week, we talked about the blessing of happiness and how as we consider this blessing, the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 is really about Blessed means happy are you. Happy are you when you do these things, when you find this happiness within a walk with God. We had our music in the churchyard. We had a band come, and we had so many people out right in front of our lawn and, and had a wonderful night. Last week, we talked about, so today, I'm sorry, today, we're talking about the blessing of peace. So what does that look like? The blessing of peace. Well, number six, 24, 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. But this is the clincher. And give you peace. Peace. Outside, but also within. With others, and also with God. 
But that's the blessing of God to have this peace, this beautiful picture of peace. So what does that look like, really? What would it look like in your family? In your idea, what image would come to mind? What, what would you maybe consider in a concrete way, maybe an abstract way? But part of this is Jesus addresses this in his very first sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. And he says in Matthew chapter 5, 9, he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. John 1, 12 says, To all who believe, to those who received his name, to them that he gave the right to become children of God. So to believe, to believe that Jesus Christ loves us, died on the cross for us, is a relationship with us, that helps us to have this peace within, to be children of the living God. But then, how do we make that peace? It says, peace makers. Well, Romans 12, 19 to 20, says to simply leave it to God. It says, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. If you think about God's people, about how God called Israel and God's people in generation upon generation, this small band of unpolished, untrained people to fight. They were called to, to fight, and they didn't know what to do or how to do it. And Exodus 14, 14 says, our God will fight for us. We simply only need to be still. To find that peace, we don't have to make it. We simply look to God and ask for peace that transcends all understanding. That peace that moth can't destroy, rust won't corrode. God, give me your peace. And out of that, God leads us to give that peace to others. We don't necessarily have to make it ourselves. God makes it for us. We simply can be still because God will fight those fights for us and lead us into that peace. Our job is to still our hearts and our souls and our minds and our strength. And let that peace transcend us so that we might give it to those around us. As children of the living God, just as teenagers are asking their parents for money, just as teenagers ask their parents for a ride, some do, ask them for sustenance, just as children ask their parents for something, we ask God for peace. And God grants it to us as we share that with those around us. But part of peace goes on in Matthew 5, 10. It says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Part of giving peace is having it. For you can't give what you don't have. And part of having the peace within is living with yourself. Being happy with yourself. Looking yourself in the mirror. And knowing that you're doing the right thing. Having a clear conscience. A sincere faith. Pure hope. That's part of being secure in who we are and having that peace. So part of being righteous is simply being good, seeing goodness for goodness' sake. The blessing comes from waking up every morning, not worrying about being found out, not worrying about breaking the law or being unethical or being immoral. Part of it is being happy with who we are, secure in our life. And again, 
looking yourself in the mirror and being able to do that. So what does God require of us? Three things, Micah 6, 8 says. Act justly, love mercy, stay in love with God. But the first one is to act justly. Now we all sin, we all mess up. We're all going to have lenses that are selfish. That's human nature. That's the human condition. But we ask God for us to see others justly, see ourselves objectively, see it how, how God sees it, and to act justly. What is right, what is true, what is noble, what is excellent, whatever is worthy and praiseworthy, let us think about such things and do right. There's a blessing in simply being right, knowing that this world is a fallen world. Sometimes doing the right thing will cost you. Sometimes doing the right thing isn't popular and won't get you far. But before you live for others and the crowd, first you have to live with yourself. And in each of us, there's like a little barometer, a little, little knob that says... Is this right or is this not right? And each of us, in in old Wesley's tradition, by the way, this morning we met with our confirmation class. And next Sunday we'll have our confirmation Sunday. And they will confirm their faith. They'll be accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Two students will be baptized by um, uh, sprinkling right here in our altar. But part of it is simply saying yes Yes, God. Yes, I want to follow you. And sometimes saying yes, just like these brave young confirmants, just like in our world, saying yes to God means trying to be good, even though we're fallen. And in this world, we will have many troubles, but God promises to be with us. For Matthew 5, 11 says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That persecution from not only being good, because God is good, and we want to be more like him, and as we continue on this sanctifying grace, the more we get closer to God, the more we want to be good. Not because we have to, because we want to follow God, be more like God. Just like in a marriage, as you get to know them more and they get to know you more, you kind of come together more. Just like in our relationship with God, we become more like God. And that's part of Christianity. Rejoicing in the persecutions. Maybe pausing and not reacting. Maybe listening, seeing what's really going on. And seeing those persecutions for what they are. For 1 Peter 4, 12 to 13. says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you. As though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ. So that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. You know, that, that's the whole call, to follow Jesus. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Though the world disown me, still I will follow. Whatever might come, even if this world is against me, I will follow Christ. So, I'd like to ask us some questions as we kind of think about what does it mean to be filled with God's peace, to have that blessing. First of all, with whom do we need to make peace? Maybe thinking about a a relationship or a situation that might cause some anxiety. Maybe a situation that grieves you, keeps us up at night. You need to know we all have those. The longer you live, the more relationships you have, 
We're not perfect. We're going to say the wrong thing. So are others. And you can't fix everything. And just because you're a Christian doesn't make everything perfect. There are still some wounds that are oozing and hurting. But part of the healing process is, first of all, getting out the foreign object, wherever it is, so that it can bleed a little bit and then heal. Part of it is recognizing those areas that aren't where they are or aren't where they could be and simply giving them to God and having peace within about it. You can't control other people. You can't control and say, you'd better give me peace or you'd better forgive me. But you can forgive yourself. You can forgive them. And that can give you peace. Peace with God, with yourself, and even with them. For to give peace too quickly can make the argument or the situation trite. And that's not the depth of the Christian faith. It's not just to glaze over and say everything is peaceful when it's not. And yet at the same time, we can have this depth of peace that's embedded within our soul. That when those rivers rise, we have a foundation in Christ because we have the identity of peace in our lives. That makes us joyful even in sorrow. Makes us rich even when we're poor. Makes us hopeful in the midst of despair. Helps us see life clearly even in the darkest of days. Receive the peace. Simply stop and say, God, help me with this. God will fight for you. You don't have to take revenge. You don't have to fight for that. We simply stop in God's presence, and receive it. And then look for him to help give it to those around us. It might be words of grace. It might be words of challenge. For God anoints and calls us and will give us the words that we need when we need them to lift up or to challenge. And that's the good news of the gospel, that we, anyone, can receive that grace, and anyone can give it through peace. But second of all, where have we been persecuted for doing the right thing? In this world that often is against the right thing in Christianity, sometimes when people look down on others for being good, not all the time, but sometimes, when have we taken a stand I want to encourage us to release that to God. Have the humility to rejoice in God, not gloating. Simply saying, God, you know, that situation was really painful. And it wounded me. But Lord, help me rejoice in you for doing the right thing. For, for humbly standing for you. And know that it's not of me. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is of us. We're not perfect. But sometimes it has nothing to do with us. For there are principalities, rulers, darkness in this world that's against the Christian faith. And we don't need to be paranoid of it, but we do need to be aware of it, that there is a spiritual warfare. And yet we are for God. We're not against people. We're for God and God's love. So we can be happy in that blessing of faith, of love, and of grace. And finally, when have you been persecuted because of your faith? Maybe you said a prayer at a restaurant and people looked at you snidely. Maybe you helped someone out who maybe was shunned. I'm not sure what it looks like for you. But that's part of Christianity. It's being persecuted. Oftentimes in our comfortable world, we forget that's part of it. We are the light of the world that shines in that darkness. And even in persecution, we 
can be happy. Because God promises, God promises us the blessing even in the midst of pain. So we can have peace even in the midst of turmoil. These next couple months, whatever might come, I pray that we have that peace in God. Even if the world comes crashing down. You know, Jesus' whole world was crashing down. He had spent three years with his disciples. He taught, he healed, he blessed so many, did all these great miracles. And then everyone deserted him, even his close three friends, even the, the, the 12 disciples that he poured his life into, even people who he healed and blessed. They all yelled, crucify him. Talk about turmoil. And yet, he showed us this example of grace under pressure, peace in the midst of turmoil. So we can remember that as Jesus went to the cross and his world was crashing down, he looked to peace through God. That even as he gave his life, he had this peace about him. So I pray that when our world comes crashing down, and if you live long enough, it will. May we look to Jesus for that peace because God promises us this blessing of peace, no matter what's going on, both now and forever. And I pray that we will live in that promise of the blessing of peace. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are with us. You never promised us an easy life. You never promised that, that we wouldn't have struggle, sickness, problems, death. But you promised to be with us always. And you promised us that we could have hope, faith, love, and even peace. Forgive us when we succumb to anxiety. When we forget about that beautiful example that you showed us, even in the midst of pain and sacrifice of struggle. And Lord, may we claim that blessing of peace. And Lord, help us to be peacemakers, to rejoice even in the midst of persecution for you or for, even for doing the right thing. Lord, help us to act justly and to love mercy and to stay in love with you. I thank you for this beautiful congregation, both here at Polk Street and those who are worshiping with us online, on TV, or even around the world on YouTube. And Lord, I pray that we might claim that promise of peace everlasting, both now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. And now please stand as we sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
I would like to remind you that this Wednesday night we have something for everyone. Whether it's here at the church, we'll have uh, pizza dinner at 5 o'clock. And 6 o'clock, we'll have a study for all people. And then at 6.30, if you are unable to be here in person, we have a video option for you. And next Sunday, we'll have our Confirmation Sunday. It'll be very unique as we have 12 students who will be confirming in Christ. But I want to let you know that it is such a joy to see you here today. And remember that we are all priests in God. So I'm going to ask us to hold out one hand. Just kind of hold out. I know it's kind of cheesy, but just try it one time. And I pray God's blessings on each of us, all of us, that we might have that peace of God, both now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen.